So hello, I'm Jessica Graham from UCL and I'm here today with Matt Smith who works as a learning technologist in the um, engineering faculty and specifically in the School of Management. If you were at last year's Moodle Moot, you may remember me talking about the my feedback report and we're here today to give you an update on how that project is going and Matt's going to speak about the pilot that we're currently running in engineering. So if you've never heard of the My Feedback report before, it allows students and staff to easily view grades and feedback across Moodle courses. It's available on Moodle.org, so you can download it, and the latest version was um, released last Sunday. The project aims to raise the visibility of feedback to students by showing them feedback from across their Moodle courses. At the moment, without the feedback report, the assessment feedback is very siloed, so students would have to go into every Moodle course individually to see all of that. We're hoping that this project will further encourage staff to move to using e-assessment tools within Moodle, because that can really increase the speed of return of feedback, as well as the quality and consistency. And our initial functionality of this tool is really aimed at students. So we're focusing on the student view predominantly, as well as allowing staff to view what the students can see. This is what the report looks like at the moment. As you can see here, um, you see the module that the assessment piece um, resides within. And then it shows grades and feedback for a variety of, of activities like Moodle assignments, Turnitin assignments, we're currently showing feedback for version one and two, but a slight change to the code will enable Turnitin Next um, to be shown in this as well. Um, you can see quiz feedback as well, workshops for peer assessment, as well as any manual grade items that you might have added into the grade book. Now the feedback comments tab um, is where the students can view all of their general feedback um, directly in the report. That is except for Turnitin. Turnitin doesn't actually have an API and they're not planning to release one um, that would allow us to draw out the general feedback and show it in this report. So the best we can do is allow students to link to that report. And alongside that, um, you'll see that students can reflect on their feedback by, get, by adding notes in here, which their personal tutor can see. It also shows when the student viewed their feedback. So if you can see the pointer here on the screen, I'm not sure if it's coming up, but in the, in the final column, um, there are dates about uh, showing when the student viewed the feedback. And if they haven't viewed it at all, you see a red cross. So a personal tutor can, in their meeting with the student, talk to them about why they're not actually going in and having a look at that feedback. Um, there's also links that take you into the feedback um, it, within context. So if you're, say, using a Moodle assignment with a rubric, clicking on the link will take you into that rubric so the student can see how they're doing, even though the rubric elements that they achieved are displayed here on this report. And this is particularly important for the quizzes because in the quizzes you only get general feedback, which is probably of limited use. Um, Whereas the students probably want to go in and see feedback against each of the quiz questions. And so this report links to their last attempt. In order to allow students to access the report, they can either go into their profile and, and um, click on the link from there, or we've also added a HTML block to their My Homepage so that they see it when they first log into Moodle and they can click through to their report. Despite this, um, there is still a lot of um, students and staff out there who aren't aware of this um, report, and it's something we need to work further on. So the benefits for those students who are using this um, are displayed on the screen here. We've mapped these against the NUS Assessment and Feedback Benchmarking Tool. And it allows students to um, quickly see how they're going overall and identify common areas for improvement so that they can actually sit down with their personal tutors. And personal tutors have this as a guide, a snapshot of how the student is going. 
One of the things we hear from personal tutors a lot is that they're not quite sure where to start in their conversations with students in these personal tutor meetings. So this tool is um, intended to help them support the students. The benefit to module tutors um, are that you can actually go in and see if a student has acted on feedback you've given them previously. So if in the last assignment you asked them to focus on improving a certain area and they still haven't done that in their next assignment, you can bring that up with the student. At the same time, you can see whether or not they've actually viewed that feedback and it tells you when they viewed it. So I'm going to hand over to Matt now, who's going to talk about the pilot. Thank you, Jess. Um, so as Jess says, I'm just going to give you um, a little, talk to you a little about how students have reacted to this since we began piloting it onto uh, programs at UCL. So I've been involved with the, the pilot from day one. Um, we're piloting it on two programs. One which is slightly out of the ordinary, not your normal run-of-the-mill program. It actually um, is an integrated program across the engineering faculty and has around 650 students on it. So it's a very large cohort for us to work with. Um, the second program is one in the School of Management um, and it's Management Science. So it, roughly we've had around 750 students um, piloting the module since we launched it. So. Um, we chose these first-year students in these programs as they're quite a neutral group. They're new to UCL and don't have any expectations about feedback or potentially prejudices about um, the tools we're using or the feedback they're getting from academics. Um, and we've really been able to run this pilot in the way that we've had um, because we've had a project team um, that have had time to dedicate to it. And I think that's a really important point. It's had a full-time uh, developer on it, and then it had a business analyst at the beginning gathering the needs of the School of Management and the Faculty of Engineering. Um, and they've been able to you know, see this pilot uh, through and touch base with students as we've been um, trialling it with them. So we've had two releases so far, and to accompany these releases, we've had um, a number of focus groups and questionnaires that just kind of gauge um, how students feel about the features we've implemented. Um, the response rate on the questionnaires was slightly lower than we'd hoped for, so it was at roughly 5%. Um, and, and this is disappointing, but because we're, you know, asking 750 students, it actually represents, you know, um, quite a decent um, sample size to have a look at. So, what the students say, um, overwhelmingly students have found it useful. Um, they say they would rather have it than not have it, which is... I, I, um, I feel it's positive in uh, some respects. Unfortunately, though, um, a number of students still find it difficult to find uh, feedback. And we've found that there's uh, two main reasons for this. Either it's not there, so the academics haven't provided it electronically. We hope they've provided it, therefore, on pen and paper or, or by other means. Um, the second reason is that it's in a different place and it's, um, it's been put in uh, a you know, place that the, the report doesn't pull through. So an example of that would be in the Moodle quiz. If an academic's fed directly back on a specific question, it's not going to appear in the My Feedback report. It's only the general feedback that gets pulled across. So what we've found is students on more scientific or mathematical courses where specific feedback on certain questions is um, more often used, um, they've found it the report less useful. So during the focus groups, um, students asked for a number of uh, new features. Um, firstly, they, they'd like to see previous year's feedback so they can see progression between, you know, the different levels. And we sh this should be possible because we have Moodle snapshots and, in effect, archives dating back for a number of years. They'd also like to see how they perform against the class average, and they all have different ideas about how they'd like to see that. Some would like to see a rank, some would like to see how they place within a percentile. Um, but when I come on to their comments, you, you, you'll be able to see that this kind of has its uh, you know, advantages and disadvantages. The other things they'd like to see are assessment weightings. Um, again, it's something available within Moodle, but not something we're currently showing. And they'd like to see um, 
have a formative and summative uh, filter to show them which assignments and you know, projects are, are counting towards their actual grade. Um, the last uh, uh, comment students have is they'd like notifications when feedback's given. So currently, it may not be the last assignment they've handed in that gets that's the latest feedback. Um, so students are predominantly relying on private WhatsApp groups, Facebook groups, um, to know when feedback's released. So what we'd like to do is introduce a, a notification via Moodle that will then you know, trigger an email um, and let them know that a new piece of feedback has been imported. So as well as uh, asking for features, um, by having this report, it's actually highlighted some areas where students would like changes in academic practice. So in general, they would like more feedback. Um, part of this pilot has highlighted for some students there is, as I say, a lack of electronic feedback. Um, secondly, they'd like to uh, see grades and feedback for final exams, as well as formal grades. So currently, Moodle displays provisional grades. All the formal grades sit in the student information system. Um, they would like those final grades to then be re-imported into Moodle so at the end of the year when they're confirmed, they can come in and have that as a record of their grades. Uh, the final thing they'd like to see are um, the digitization of hard copy assessment and, um, and therefore the feedback that accompanies that, so lab reports, architectural drawings, um, They'd like to be able to go in and click and see, you know, scanned versions of that feedback within the report. So um, I'm just going to pass back over to Jess, who's going to just um, give you some thoughts on, on the students' feature requests and comments. So as Matt's already mentioned, the report does highlight an absence of electronic feedback, which may be an issue, but students already know that they're not receiving feedback electronically. But one of the problems is that in some cases they are and they just don't know where to look for it. So we do need to work on helping students understand that they need to go into their quizzes to see the feedback and they need to go into Turnitin to see feedback in there as well. We would also like to enable the um, reminders for feedback. This is something that students have asked for as well. And I'd um, love to have the Moodle event monitoring system turned on so that this was possible. There are concerns at the moment um, about potential performance issues. So if anybody is using this in their own Moodle installations, I'd be really interested to talk to you in one of the breaks about how that is impacting um, overall Moodle performance. So what's next? Um, as Matt mentioned and, and what students have asked for is they'd like to be able to compare past year's feedback with existing year's feedback. So we're working on that at the moment. In the next release we'll be able to look back into our other Moodle installations to see how they've progressed through the years that they've been at UCL. And although we already have personal tutor and module tutor views, these don't really provide a way of identifying students who are struggling at this point because, as I said before, we have focused on the student view first. Um, so we'd like to implement this as well. And there'll be a program administrator view which will enable them to see all the students in the department and similarly highlight and support those students who may be struggling. What's under review are a number of things that the um, project board um, might find a bit contentious and there is some discussion over, so may or may not be implemented in future. And some of these things are um, what students have been requesting, such as the summative and formative assessments, where um, we're thinking about creating categories within the Moodle gradebook to enable staff to, to move items into a summative folder and a, and a formative folder to be able to show this information to students in a way that is um, reliable. Because at the moment, we're concerned that there's unreliable weightings in the Moodle um, gradebook. And we wouldn't want to then show that to students um, and have them think that, that was accurate. Um, the performance score, similarly, is um, a bit contentious. Um, there was a comment that one of the students made that it might demotivate students who aren't doing very well. Um, we're thinking at the moment that if we do implement it, it will be you'll be able to see where, whether you're above or below the class average. 
And what I'd like to really see implemented is an assessment calendar. Um, this may get implemented in future if we get further funding for the project, um, but what it would allow the program administrators to do is see all of the assessment dates for a program and enable them to be spaced out across the term so they're not all clustered around the same time because this is adding extra stress to the students. So some takeaway points from today is that um, communication to the staff and students, letting them know that this exists is very difficult. Um, you all know that a lot of people don't read their emails these days. So trying to highlight that this report exists has been tricky, which is probably one of the reasons why we only got 5% feedback from the students. Um, it's unlikely that the Turnitin issue is going to be resolved anytime soon. And if a personal tutor um, is looking at the feedback report, they can't actually um, access any of the information directly. So they can't click on a Turnitin assignment and see it unless they are also enrolled on that Moodle course. So this can be an issue because they get a snapshot of how the student's doing, but they can't see the detail unless the student is there with them and logged into Moodle. And just a bit of a technical um, issue that I wanted to raise that has been surfaced on the Moodle.org discussions where this plugin is available, is if you're setting this up, you need to make sure that the permissions are set at site level rather than at course level, because this report looks across courses, so it sits above the course level. And if you assign permissions for this report to student or teacher roles, um, it's not going to give the correct permissions. So I just thought I'd highlight that. Um, I'd just like to quickly acknowledge the people who initiated these, this project. Um, it's based on work done at the IOE by Tim Neumann and Dr Gwyneth Hughes. Um, we were actually able to take the code that they were running at the IOE previously and build upon it for this report. And locally at UCL, I'd like to acknowledge John Mitch, Professor John Mitchell and Dr Jason Davies, who are really the champions behind um, this project, and it's one of the reasons why it's um, running. <laughs> So I'll just leave these useful links on the screen if you want to download the report to find out more. And I think we're going to be asking for questions now. So thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Michael Hughes from the University of Strathclyde. Um, we've built the exact same system that you built as well. <laughs> um, almost exactly. We'll talk about it a bit later on. So I'm really interested how you've managed, to, how your approach to getting the data out in a performant way has been done. Because our experience of it is that it's actually quite difficult to get all of that data out of the Moodle database quickly uh, and cost effectively. So I'd be interested to, to know how you guys have, are dealing with that cost and sort of keeping that data up to date. And In terms of, uh, sorry, I don't think I understand. Uh, so, in, in terms of extracting things like some of the stuff out of uh, mod assign the feedback, you've got to go into the assignment and ask the assignment to provide that information. We found that to be a very costly operation in terms of how do you do that for every single module. So, I'd be interested. Okay. So, as in the, the queries you're writing to yeah. go in and draw those and out. How you manage that and in terms of it, extensibility uh, for adding other modules in as well. Um, so we, we already had that available to us, the code to draw out all of that information. I think the problem we're facing instead is having staff add the feedback into the correct areas that would then display through into the report. But the, um, the development of that SQL code, if that's what you're mm -hmm. talking about, was already there. So we just took that code from the IOE and implemented it right. and putting it into a, a Moodle plugin. So there's no actual cost in terms of um, running, running the report the report now and getting that information out of the database. Okay. Question. Okay. You mentioned, you, you know, you asked students whether it was useful. Did you measure how widely it is actually used? How, how many students are actually going and looking at it? Uh, we haven't actually looked at that. Um, I, I believe it's being reported, um, but we've only just um, re, like released the, the latest version, so we need to go into the logs and see. I think we're actually probably going to have to go into the Moodle database, into the log table, and actually see how many times it's been accessed. I'm not sure how else we'd, we'd do that. Okay. All right. Ask you, Johnny, 